<laughs> wow, wow, wow. I ain't going to lie to you. The 9 o'clock got so loose, uh, it took me about two minutes to preach. I mean, uh, they went they went nuts. That was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so awesome to have the uh, greatest worship team on the planet. I tell you, I just love it, love it, I love it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what about uh, those videos? Uh, pretty, pretty amazing that uh, we've been partnering only two years now uh, with the Suicide Walk, uh, but uh, we partnered with them last year financially. I know some of our people walked uh, with them. And then Reva of Helping Hands, right? So uh, you heard how much food that is, right? So feeding so many different people. People say, do y'all have a food pantry here? No. Uh, but we do support one financially and physically here in town. And I have the last four banquets that they have done. Uh, they do two a year. Uh, they've invited me to speak at those, uh, the last four. And I said to her, this last one, I said, uh, Reva, I said, you keep asking me back to, you know, there's other people that can you know, do these banquets and, and help raise funds for, you know, this ministry. And she said, Pastor Steve, the last four times every year that you've come, it's been more money than we've ever received ever in the history of Helping Hands. So we want you to keep on coming back. I said, all right, all right. So uh, we've been involved with them for like, I don't know, over a decade now, helping to feed the poor in Paulding County. And then what about Paulding County Pregnancy Center, right? Uh, do you realize, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, 38 uh, ladies that went in there uh, to uh, talk about maybe getting abortion. And because they showed them the films and because they counseled them and met with them, uh, they decided to keep their children, okay, and have babies. That's pretty gigantic, right? And uh, so we're part of that and been a part of that for a very long, long time. And uh, we've given uh, tens of thousands of dollars to Paulding County Pregnancy. Uh, and uh, a couple years ago, we redid their whole thing. Uh, we took a team over there, and we redid everything. We did their, uh, I don't remember what all we did. We just did a whole bunch of stuff. Amanda led a team of that a couple years ago. So uh, thank you so much. So when you give, right, uh, on November 12th, every year we do this offering. So when you give... On November 12th, you allowing us to impact across the street and around the world. You allowing us to impact ministries like you just saw and that you saw last week and the week before that, and ministries that you'll see this week and so forth, etc. Uh, because of your faithfulness of giving, we're able to touch the world across the street and around the world. So thank you for that. Uh, our goal is $176,000, the largest goal we've ever had. Right, 150,000 for Kingdom Come, 26 regular tithe. Uh, an offering. That would take a miracle, but that would take all of us together collectively doing that. If 100 people gave $1,000, that's $100,000 right there, right? And so uh, uh, I know we can do it and believe that uh, it's going to happen. Lots of cool things are happening uh, in our midst for sure. Uh, do you remember when you were a kid uh, and learning uh, basic math, right? I mean, the two plus two, the four plus four, the five plus five, right? The basic math. And you understood that until you got the basics down, you could not move to the next level, right? You have to have the basics down first. And then as we progressed in school, it got a little harder, right? It started being multiplication. And do you remember the multiplication table when you were a kid? Right? Man, for some of you, that brings back some really good memories. For some of you, it brings back some really bad ones, right? And, but you memorize that, that multiplication uh, table, right? And then hopefully through the years, you learn some tricks, and, and all math teachers hate this, but do you remember the trick that you learned that you could actually multiply from left to right? Do you ever remember that trick? It was pretty amazing. What about the nines, right? The nines. Uh, you remember the nines trick, right? Look, look on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see how it does it, right? Y'all, did y'all remember any of these tricks when you were a kid, right? And so then you're like, dang, how come somebody didn't teach me this back then, right? But uh, now you got it now, right? Multiplication is so much better 
than addition. How would you like to add to your influence or how would you like to multiply your influence? How would you like to add some friends or how would you like to multiply friends? How would you like to add to your money or better yet, how would you like to actually multiply your money, right? In the books of Acts, we have an incredible principle that I want you to make sure you get. Listen carefully. I'm not preaching out of Acts, but I want you to get this principle in your head, all right? When you read the book of Acts, you find the Bible says, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, and the Lord added to the church daily. Right? Every single day, God was adding to the church. So when you read Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, all those chapters tell you and I that God added to his church. But then when you read chapter 6, the wording changes and it says that God multiplied their numbers, okay? And so you ought to all of a sudden go, wow, wait a minute now. He was adding, and then all of a sudden he multiplied. And there is an incredible principle, not only for church growth, but in life found in that principle. Here's what it is. Listen carefully. Those of you that own businesses, listen very carefully. It is this in Acts chapter 6. The apostle said we need to delegate we need to equip, we need to train, we need to hand this ministry, some of the ministry, over to other people, and when we hand it over to them, they will continue to do the ministry. So watch this. A group of people were doing ministry. We trained and equipped other people to do ministry, and they did ministry, and then guess what happened? The church molded. Multiplied. It's the principle of delegation. It's the principle of letting go. It's the principle of you can't do it all by yourself. It's the principle of letting go your ego and your pride and go ahead and saying, you know what? They may not be able to do it as good as I can do, but they can probably do it almost as good as I can do. So therefore, you release it. And it is the principle of multiplication. And I want to show you a little bit of that same principle uh, today as we continue our series, The Supernatural um, abundant, blessed life. Now, listen carefully. The supernatural. When you look at 2023, can you honestly look back and say, I can look and see that God did something supernatural. It wasn't average. It wasn't get by. It wasn't status quo. It wasn't just, hey, uh, que sera, sera. That's Doris Day theology for those of you that are older. <laughs> and those of you that are young have no idea what I just talked about there, right? But or can you say that it was supernatural? It was unexplainable. God showed up and God showed off and God did something in my life, in my marriage, in my family, in my church that was supernatural. It was abundant. It was full and overflowing. Hey, it was literally blessed by God. That's what we're talking about. So today, we're going to talk about multiplication. And we're going to see a very familiar story, a story that you knew and have heard your whole entire life. How many of you grew up in church and you've been to Sunday school, okay? All right? And so now we call it small groups. It's the same thing, right? But it's the same thing. Small group, Sunday school. And here's a story that you heard your whole entire life, but I bet you you're going to learn something today. You ready? Watch this. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and he healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, hey, this is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Hey, send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some food. I mean, there's got to be a Burger King, a Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A somewhere, right? But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave 
to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. All right, now listen carefully to this big idea. Listen. Jesus is the master of multiplication. And he always, listen, and he wants you to learn to multiply, not just get by. Did you know that 70% of American people just get by, paycheck to paycheck? Did you know that 70% of Americans right now don't even have $1,000 set aside somewhere in some kind of emergency fund if an emergency took place? 70% of people that are probably listening to me right now in this building and online don't even have $1,000 set aside just in case emergency happens. An emergency always happens happens, right? And so you're just getting by. Now, I'm not talking about health and wealth and prosperity gospel. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am talking about that God doesn't want you just to get by. He wants you to understand how to multiply. And I watch this. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. And then it, then it says, and Jesus said, they do not need to go away. So the very first principle I want you to notice that you're going to see, and I've got seven of them, right? I haven't, had, I, haven't, I haven't had seven principles in a long time, okay? Normally one big idea, a big idea and seven principles. Number one, you ready? Listen carefully. Jesus is interested in meeting your needs, you got to really believe that, right? Well, you know, God's really not interested. God's off somewhere. God doesn't care. God doesn't, yes, he does. God is very, very interested in your needs. Not your wants, <laughs> but your needs, right? Did you notice the text that I just read? Jesus saw these people, and it says he was moved with compassion. That word moved and compassion literally in the Greek New Testament literally means that Jesus' stomach was turned inside, right? Have you ever seen something or heard something that moved you? I mean, literally like, man, turned your insides out. That's exactly the word used there. Jesus saw it. He saw people that were hungry. I don't know if you noticed the text that I read. They started off in the morning, and now it's at nighttime, and bellies were growling, okay? People were hungry, and he was moved with compassion because he said, I want to meet their need. Do you remember the story in the Bible that uh, uh, it goes kind of like this? Your heavenly father loves you and cares about you so much that if you ask him for a, a, a piece of bread, is he going to give you a snake? If you ask him for a fish, is he going to give you a scorpion? Y'all remember that story, right? And then he says, if you, if you being uh, evil in your heart, you would take care of your own children, how much more so will your heavenly father want to take care of you? What parent doesn't want to see their kids succeed? What, what, what parent goes, man, yeah, I hope you mess up. I hope you fail. I hope you get fired. No parent does that. But every parent wants their kid to do well. Your heavenly father, Jesus, is interested in meeting your need. Matter of fact, he's so interested in meeting your needs that he actually calls himself Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. So Jesus is willing and able to meet all your needs. Number two, listen carefully. This is gigantic. Multiplication is seized by people who realize it and act on it. You see, what happens to a lot of folks in church is you come and you hear information, you hear Bible truth, and that's awesome, but you don't do anything with it. You see, hearing Bible truth can be inspirational, but until you apply it, it can't be transformational, right? Right? And so you got to actually do something with it, right? Now watch what happens here. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, hey, this is a deserted place. The hour's already late. Hey, send these people away, right? Can you see Jesus? He's up there teaching, right? And one of the disciples goes, uh, psst, psst, hey, Jesus. Yeah, dude, I'm teaching, right? No, no, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it's, it's late, dude. I mean, Taco Bell closes in five minutes. 
I mean, you got to you got to shut this down. We're loving to teach it all, but you got to shut this thing down. We got to send these people away, right? I mean, it's really really late. And listen, let them go to the villages and buy themselves something to eat. And then Jesus says, uh, they don't need to go away. You you got to give them something to eat, right? Now, you know how many people were there, right? The Bible says there was 5,000 men, and it's very specific, 5,000 men. And you know when you have 5,000 men, you got 400, you got 4,990 women. And when you got 5,000 men and that many women, you're going to have another 10,000 children. Somebody help me. Right? So there's probably 20,000 people there. And listen, don't you miss this. How can these 20,000 people be provided for? This is the tendency in every single one of us. How? How is God going to provide? Every single person in this building, every person online at one time in their life has said, how? How in the world is this going to to work out. We want to figure out in advance how God is going to provide for us. Hey, God, if you'll go ahead and let me know in advance how you're going to do all this, hey, it'll all be good. But God says that's not how it it works, right? Now, the Gospels, right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell this same story, and but they have a little different perspective. John gives us a little bit more detail. This is what John says. John says, uh, Philip, oh, we didn't know that in Matthew's gospel, but a guy named Philip, right, one of the uh, 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 apostles, he said, hey, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. In other words, hey, it's going to take eight months of salaries to feed these people. Who in the world wants to spend that kind of money feeding these kind of people? (laughs) His eyes... Philip's eyes were on the natural when they should have been on the supernatural. You see, listen to me carefully. He saw the problem like most of us do. He saw the situation. He saw the circumstance. They're overwhelming. How in the world can this happen? That's what most of us think. It can't be done. I'm going to preach this verse, I believe, January 7th of next year. This is the verse I'm going to preach. Now to him... Who is able, anybody know that he's able? He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hey, he's able to do abundantly above all. I can even ask or think. That's supernatural, abundant, blessed living right there. You see, no need you have is too big for Jesus. Well, Pastor Steve, you don't know, understand, my situation is a little different. Oh, it is? Yeah, you don't know my situation. My situation is different. You don't know my situation. You don't know my problems. Hey, the math does not work in my situation, but there is no exception. Jesus Christ can meet your need. Your situation isn't different. Well, Pastor Steve, you know the economy, inflation, man, it's, it's nuts. Yeah, it, it, it is. You know, interest rates are, are really up right now. Yeah, trust me, they are. Timing's bad. Hey, we can't expect miracles. Do you hear them? We can't expect God to do anything. Now, watch this. They said to him, we have here only five loaves and, and two fish, right? And, and then John goes further. Listen carefully. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, hey, there's a lad here, a little old boy who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Hey, we got a little bit, but hey, how can we feed 20,000 people with that? We would need a miracle for that. I've been a senior pastor for over 30 years, and let me tell you what I've discovered in 30 years. There's three kinds of people. There's the people who get it. I mean, they get it. There's people who almost get it. And then there's people who never get it. They just don't get it. 
and probably never will, unfortunately, right? So there's people who get it. They go, wow, I, I see that. Yeah, okay, yeah, that can work. Uh, I'm almost there. And then there's those that just, this never going to happen. Multiplication happens when you see it and you seize it and you make a decision. Let me give you another one. Faith and obedience provide multiplication. You do know where those five loaves and two fish came from, right? It just told us. A little nameless kid, a little boy, a nameless little boy, an ordinary kid that evidently had some extraordinary faith said, hey, hey, uh, listen, I know it ain't a lot, but I, I've got some fish and some bread here. Now, you know what most of the people would have done? Most of the people, after hearing Jesus preach all day long, stomach growling, said, you know, would have went somewhere behind a tree and hid. Come on, somebody, don't lie. Right? You'd have went to the bathroom, right, and then hid, and, and, you know, and that's what that little boy that's what most people would have done. But that little boy didn't do that. He could have been selfish, that most people would have been selfish, but he wasn't selfish. He decided he was going to do something. I got a little bit, but you know what? Maybe, maybe God could do something with a little bit. Last year, my wife and I, we were uh, in London, England, and uh, uh, about 100 yards away from Buckingham Palace is one of my, my heroes. I mean, you go to my office right now, I've got volumes of books on Winston Churchill. I mean, he is one of my heroes. And uh, so we were right there at Buckingham Palace. 100 yards away was the war room, right? Winston Churchill's war room. I mean, the room that he literally, uh, I mean, managed the entire war from. It was just amazing. This is what he said. Oh, he said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. You make a life by, by, what, what you, by, by, by your living, right? But, but you make I mean, a life by what you actually give away. This boy's faith and obedience provided a miracle for everybody. Did you hear that? This little boy's faith and obedience provided a miracle for everybody. It takes faith to see multiplication. Your faith, your obedience, your sacrifice is going to provide miracles. Well, I don't have a whole lot. This little boy didn't have a whole lot, but little is much when God gets in it. And when I read this story, let me tell you what I think. They weren't expecting anything. Can you imagine hanging out with the God of the universe but not expecting much? There was no spirit of expectation. They had seen Jesus do some amazing, ridiculous miracles in the past. But yet, they were hanging out with God in a body and didn't expect a whole lot. Can you, can you imagine? You can, right? Because it happens to us. You don't think he can do a whole lot, and he can They saw this gigantic problem. Jesus, he just saw an opportunity. Jesus is the master of multiplication. He wants you to learn to multiply, not just get by. Now watch this. Nothing is too small for God to use. Nothing. Hey, I'll take some fish. I'll take some bread. Nothing's too big, right? Well, I don't have a lot. I only make $200 a week. Hey, that's like $20 if I tithe. That's not a whole lot. Little is much when God gets involved in it. Do you remember the story of the widow's mite? I love that story. Go back and read it again. It says that Jesus, listen, it says that Jesus was sitting there across from the treasury, across from the offering buckets, and it says that he was watching what everybody put in the bucket. Well, that'll change your giving right there, won't it? And that Jesus actually watching what you do online and the check that you write, right? He actually watches when you go by the offering bucket and, 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 and you throw in an empty envelope and act like you gave something. He actually, actually sees that, right? He, he watches. He, he watches what you put. And do you remember what he said? He said, hey, this lady who is broke gave two little pennies 
and she gave more than anybody. Now, listen carefully. Everything I've told you so far is all foundational, all right, for you to understand multiplication. Now I'm going to show you how your money gets multiplied. You ready? Lord, have mercy. If we were in a car, I would tell you to put your seatbelt on. Listen to verse 19. I read it, and I, was, I, 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 I emphasized certain words to make sure you tried to get it earlier, so see if you picked it up. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. Another chapter uh, of gospel says that he sat them down in 50s, you know. Well, that's a miracle all by itself, wasn't it? Getting the 20,000 people to sit down, all right? And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, listen carefully, he blessed and broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. Listen carefully. If you want your money to multiply, you ready? Something must be blessed before it can multiply. The number one reason why your finances have not multiplied, because they are not blessed. Your money's not blessed. And if your money's not blessed, then your money can't be multiplied. You see, don't you miss this? Something has to be blessed. Jesus blessed it first, and then when he blessed it, then and then did it multiply. Jesus has the power to bless and multiply, but you have not given him the opportunity to do so. Your money has to be blessed first. If you were here last week, and a bunch of you were here last week. We had right out 1,000 last week. You know we're running 1,000 every Sunday, right? You guys are awesome coming, showing up at church. And so almost 1,000 people were here last Sunday. And here, so most of you heard this, but for those of you that didn't hear it, we talked about first things first, right? Jesus being first. And he said, if you'll put me first, right? And that was that tithe, that first fruits, right? Off the top, 10%, it belongs to him. It's the very first thing before your mortgage, before your lights, before you buy grocery, the first thing we do, very first thing, always and have been for umpteen years, he gets his first. And then I did something last week. I, I gave you a card, and some of you, it's in your thing. I said, if you'll tithe for the next 90 days and you come into financial hardship because of your tithe, we'll give your money back to you. I got, caught a guy. I don't know how old he is. I know he's probably 26, 27 years of age. He caught me in the, uh, in the foyer. He said, I grew up in church my whole life. I have never in my whole life in church heard anybody say that if you'll give 10%, that you'll give people's money back after 90 days. He said, that is absolutely amazing. He said, that's a guarantee. I said, it's a guarantee. And you know what happened? 19 of you, I thought it would be a whole lot more, but 19 of you signed that card and said, you know what, I'm going to start giving 10%. I had a lady at the 9 o'clock hour come to me in the Connection Hub and grab my hand, and she said, I am one of those 19 families, 19 families, right, signed that card. And six other families said, I'm going to give more. I'm going to increase my giving. But 19 families said, I'm going to tithe. And she came up to me. I won't tell you her name, but she gave me her name, and she said, I'm one of those 19 families. I started last week, and here's what she said. I loved it. I am so excited and anticipating what God is going to do. I said, you got the right idea right there, right? Stepped out of faith. And then I got to doing the math on that. 19 families. Let's just say they only made $25,000 a year. Average income in Paulding County is like $65,000 per household income, okay? But let's just say she, these 19 families only made 25000 a year. That would be $50,000 more a year coming into New Season Church for the glory of God. Just 19 families. Can you imagine what 50 or 100 could possibly do? Your money has to be blessed before it can multiply. What does it say about your priorities that 
you willingly pay everything else first, and then you see if there's anything left over to give to God. What does that say? It says that he's not first and your money is not blessed. The miracle didn't happen until Jesus blessed it. Mm. Listen to the word of God. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. And it's talking about him being first. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. The crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trial will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in and you'll be blessed when you go out. That's the promise of God. But most of us are not living in that supernatural, abundant, blessed life because your money has to be blessed first before it can multiply. I thought it may get a little quiet right there. All right, let me show you something else. In this same text, only what is given can be multiplied. Now watch this. This is amazing. You've read this story your whole life, but I bet you haven't seen this. Watch this. He blessed and broke it, and watch this. And he gave the loaves. Who did he give them to? The disciples. Did you ever think, did you ever think, hey, he blessed it, and all of a sudden when he did, wham, and there was all of a sudden enough to food feed 20,000 people. That's not how it happened, right? That's how you thought in your mind it happened, but it didn't happen that way. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the multitudes. Did you catch that? Some of you going like, dang, that's actually in the Bible. Did you notice Jesus gave it to the disciples, and then the disciples gave it to the people? It was in the master's hands, and then he gave it to you in order for you to be able to bless other people. They could have kept it. They could have said, you know what? This is ridiculous. How in the world is this going to happen? I, yeah, I heard him pray, you know, and he broke it. Like, yeah, what's going to happen? But they stepped out and they went and gave it to the people. It was only multiplied when it was given. Here's how you can live. You can live like this, or you can live like this. When you live like this, you can't receive anything, and you can't give anything. But when you live like this, you're able to receive and able to give. God wants to put resources in your hands so you can bless other people. And then the last truth, multiplication leads to abundance. It does. Uh, every November, we take up this offering, right? So let me tell you what uh, uh, we do in October. Uh, we start giving money away. Not to new season, but to other things. We start giving money away. Some of you in this building have been a recipient of Vicki and I giving you money. Because in October, that's what we start doing. We start, we start giving money. We start sowing that seed, right, to believe for that great harvest that will come on November 12th. And so we start, start sowing, start giving, start multiplying, right? <laughs> Multiplication leads to abundance. Watch what it says. So they all ate and were still hungry. Is that what it says? They were filled. That means they were full. That means they were completely satisfied. Have you ever went to, out to eat, and after you ate, you went, dang, I am so stuffed. I can't even uh, eat another thing. I am completely full. I am completely satisfied. Unless you're my wife, and she says, everybody has a pocket for dessert. <laughs> it's a hidden pocket, right? Okay. But literally, you say, 
I'm full. I'm, I'm satisfied. They were full and they were satisfied. Listen carefully. And they took up 12 baskets full, full of the fragments that remained. And it's so funny to me that there wasn't six baskets or eight baskets or 10, there were 12. How many disciples were there? How many baskets? Jesus dropped a mic. <laughs> right? Hey, you didn't have the faith to believe. You, hey, you've been hanging out with me, the God of the universe. And you thought your piddly little need could not be met by me. Hey, you thought your gigantic need could not be met by me. But multiplication leads to abundance. When it's blessed, I gave it to him first. He gives it to me, I'm able to give it to others. Doesn't mean he doesn't want you to keep some from yourself. He, he, he's really clear about that. You can live in a nice house and drive a nice car. It's okay. Matter of fact, why would not your heavenly father want you to be blessed? Of course he does. But now you get the opportunity to multiply. And watch what the Bible says. Oh, my goodness. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God, you got to pay attention. That I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do you know what he, you know what he continues to say? You keep on reading it. Listen carefully. He says, I want to bless you so much that you become the lender and not the borrower. I want to bless you so abundantly that you're able to lend money instead of borrowing money. That's what he said. What would happen if you started to believe that? What if you started to actually say, God, I'm going to take you at your word. God, this is what the Bible says. God, I'm going to do it. You don't give to get, right? I'm going to show you that in two weeks. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. Press down, right, all that. I'm going to preach that whole verse. Never preached it in my life. I'm going to preach it. It's not about giving to get. Motive is always big. But when I do give, God does promise me some big things. All right, let me tell you some other verses real quick. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. If you read your proverb today, I read my proverb every day. If you read your proverb today, you know what it said? It said, if I'm generous and I give to the poor, God will be generous toward me. That's what it said today. Ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you this verse, but I had to give it to you twice. I'm going to give it to you in a couple weeks. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. We sang it today. I don't know if you know, we, we sang the Bible here. We were singing it today, and we were singing it, and here's what Timor was leading us. He said, uh, uh, Lord, uh, help me to be uh, content in all that you give me, right? You know, what? That's, at, that's in Philippians chapter 4. It's that same place, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody knows that verse, right? You better read that verse in context. It's the context of money. Oh, you just learned something in church. You've been quoting that verse for everything, haven't you? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's in the context of verse 19. My God shall supply my every need according to his riches and glory. And I have learned to be content in whatever. That's the context of all that. Hmm. All right, let me just give you some takeaways. I got more to say than that. All right. These are three takeaways. They're all, they're all good. Listen. God wants to put great resources in our hands so that we can be conduits of 
of his blessing. Yes, he gave it to you. You worked hard for it. You're smart. You're savvy. You're whatever. God blessed you abundantly. Yes. Go on vacation. Amen. Go live somewhere nice and drive something, something nice. I, I hope that for all of you. I do. But he didn't just give that to you just for you. He gave it to you. You can be a conduit. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. See, you're thinking, well, I got to give this, you know, big old chunk some. You don't have to. You give somebody five bucks. Been a couple years right here at New Season. I saw a lady and, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to not be super spiritual. I just, yeah, go give her some money. And so I did. And it wasn't, it was a $20 bill. It wasn't nothing at all. I gave it to her, and then she writes me the week and said, I came to church dead on E. I had no money. I did not get paid for four more days. I have no money. And I'm telling you, Pastor Steve, I came to church so far on E. She said, I was asking God, please let me get to church and, and, and help me get back home. She said, I had no idea. And she said, and you gave me $20. It don't have to be 1000 or 1500 or 5000 It doesn't have to be a big amount. Give somebody 5 Give somebody 10 I bought a donut for my granddaughter or my grandson. I bought a pumpkin something or other up there. Uh, and I, for something else. Oh, a little uh, yogurt thing for my little Memphis. And I think it was $6. I gave him $20. I said, keep the change. Just give something. Just give. God wants to work miracles in our lives, but he starts by working miraculously in our hearts. We're stingy. Right? How is he going to provide? I don't know how he's going to provide. I don't know how the God of the universe that created the world is going to be able to provide for me. God wants to work miracles, but you've got to start. You've got to step out. Because the big idea is Jesus is the master of multiplication. And he wants you to learn to multiply, not just get by. Aren't you tired of just getting by? You don't have to. Now, again, I'm not talking about health, wealth, prosperity. God wants everybody healthy, everybody wealthy. For every truth in the Bible, the devil certainly comes in and tries to twist some things. But there's a whole lot of truth in there about how God wants to bust a fire out of you. So don't miss that because you get tied up in all the other stuff that, hey, send me $20 and you'll get $2,000 in return, right? Right? You've seen those TV. Put your hand on the TV. Just sow a seed of $100 right now. You'll get, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There's one guy that's really good at that because he's a, never mind. Give your money to New Season Church. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It works right there. God, I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. Let's pray together. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed in quietness of this moment. For some of you, it's just another sermon about money. And unfortunately, some people get it, some people almost get it, and some people never will. For some of you in this building watching online, God has been doing something in your heart like he did with the three people that got saved at the 9 o'clock hour. God is doing something in your heart. God's been doing something in your life. There's been situations and circumstances that have brought you to this place in your life that you know you need to give your life to God. Jesus loves you, died for you on a cross, rose from the dead, 
wants to forgive you and change you and give you a brand new start and a brand new life as the greatest news in all the world. Don't you let the devil lie to you today. God has a wonderful, amazing plan for your life. Will you receive it? Heaven is promised to those that have been saved. You get to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. You get to live an abundant, full, meaningful life here on earth. But you got to be willing to take that step, be willing to give your heart and your life to him. And if that's your desire today, and you know who I'm talking to, sir, ma'am, young person, you know, you know it's you. You know that God's been knocking. Now, open up the door. Be saved. If that's you, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And as I say it out loud, say it with me in your heart and mean it. Say these words. Say, Jesus, God, I know that I've sinned against you, and I really am sorry. I'm willing right now to just turn from my sin and turn towards you. Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my life. Save me. Forgive me. Change me. Make me a new person. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. We are so excited that today you decided to join us online. We hope today that you were encouraged and blessed by the Word of God and encouraged today to walk with God in a deeper, more intimate way. For some of you, you just prayed that prayer with us. You just invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, do you realize that Jesus just saved you? Your sins just got forgiven. And that is the greatest thing in all the world. Matter of fact, the Bible says that all of heaven throws a party because you just said yes to Jesus Christ. And so we want to encourage you to read the Bible, to pray, to find you a, a church home that you may be involved in or even on this online campus we've got going on here. Or I want to encourage you, if you just prayed that prayer, to let us know about that. Matter of fact, you can text your response to 470-509-5139. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Don't wait. You don't have to think about it. If you just pray that prayer Text that response to us and let us know, and then we will get back with you and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, thanks for watching us online.